Halliger are in the middle of Schleswig-Holstein's mudflats called the Wattenmeer. They can only be reached by a ferry service, which runs several times a day whenever the tide permits. Halligoge is a good hour's journey from the mainland. Svanche Paprota is a mudflats guide and has lived on the Halliga for three years. The Wattenmeer comes from the words to wade and see. You can wade across the mudflats twice a day. We're now wading across to the next island, the next Hallig. The mudflats form the largest national park in Central Europe, 450 kilometers long and up to 40 kilometers wide. It's the home to many animal species. These are shore crabs. Life on the Halaga is shaped by the tides. At high tide, everything here is underwater. At low tide, the water rolls back to reveal the mudflats. A year ago, the area was declared a UNESCO World Natural Heritage Site. We now have the same status as the Great Barrier Reef and the Grand Canyon. The Wattenmeer is really unique in the world. I live on a Hallig, and they exist only here. It makes me a little proud. Hoge is the second largest Hallig. It takes about three hours to walk all the way around it. About 120 people live here on 10 artificially raised mounds that protect homes from storm tides. On the Hallige, we live on mounds called Wafts. Here you can see Hoge's church mound, and the church is Hoge's oldest building. We need the mounds for the winter because that's when the water rises up past where I'm standing. And that's what makes the Hallige unique. When a storm tide comes, everything you see here that's green, all these meadows, is underwater. Then we're cut off. And this is Hans Mound, our downtown on Hoge. In the summer, hundreds of people gather here. When a ferry arrives, the tourists need tending to. In the summer, that's about 800 visitors per day. Anyone who comes to Hoge should definitely visit the Königspiesel. Here you can see how people lived on the islands hundreds of years ago. The biggest tourist attraction on the island is an 18th century captain's room with alcoves, or wall beds. The only way to sleep in them was in a half-sitting position. Now we head for the largest Hallig, Langenes, the only one accessible by train at low tide. But the railway wasn't built to carry people, so visitors and residents alike must rely on boats. Most people who live here have one. Langeness is a good place for bird watching. That's why I've brought my binoculars along. Life on Langeness is slow paced, an island of tranquility for people and animals alike, whatever the season. Langeness means Long Island, and Langeness is especially long 11 kilometers of unspoiled nature. And the island's landmark is the lighthouse. Over there, you see lots of oyster fishes. They have their nests down below and are watching over them. You have to be a bit careful when you walk over there. There are also a lot of turn birds. Next stop one of Germany's smallest communities. Now we've arrived at Gröder. What's unusual about Gröder is that it's so small, only two and a half square kilometers, two mounds and a very small harbor. Let's take a look around. Actually, only 17 people live on Gröder, but once a ship docks, there are a lot more people here, obviously. And that's when Aunt Monica's kiosk opens. It's the only one on the island. Mayor Volker Mumsen greets each guest personally. Good morning. We're visitors from Hoge. 
How many families do you have here on Gröde? Here on Gröde, we have six families with three children and a kindergarten. They all live in the four buildings on this mound. What's nice is that we have a 360 degree view of the sea. Wherever you turn, you're close to the water. Svancha Paprota enjoys this view as often as she can. Once you've lived here, you never want to move away again. I can't imagine there is such a beautiful view as you have here anywhere else in the world. Especially in the summer, when evening descends on the Halaga. <laughs>